Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we'll be doing an unboxing of Task Force Carrier Battles in the Pacific from VUCA Simulations. It is a game by Genichiro Suzuki. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, I do apologize. This is a, it's a, it's a heavy, big, heavy, heavy box. I should weigh this thing. It is a, uh, Excuse me, it's a game about the most important battles from the Pacific Theater in World War II. The game is designed to be accessible and enjoyable for all, ranging from players with no experience of war games or simulation games to those with an intermediate or above proficiency in the genre. There are 10 scenarios. It is rated 5 in complexity and a 7 for solitaire suitability. So that's pretty cool. This takes place from 1941 to 1942 in World War II. So let us find out what is inside this, making it so so heavy hey if you're enjoying these videos be sure to give us a like and a share don't forget to subscribe and click the bell one ringy dingy so one thing that makes these this heavy is VUCA simulations is a great job of production in fact you know it starts at the, at the box i mean the boxes are very solid very thick very nice walls very high quality production they do. So if you get a game from them, you know you're getting quality. At least on the production. I can't say that about every rule game, but they seem to be quality, not quantity. So anyway, so we're gonna start. We have the scenario book. This is a full, you know, full box size book. Looks like an A4 printing. Um, 28 pages. Full color. And we in fact, in fact, this is the, oh, this is the scenario book, duh. So this goes right into the scenarios, and there are, as promised, 10 scenarios. The attack on Pearl Harbor is where you begin. It's a tutorial, it's for one, it is designed for one player. So this particular battle is a one player game. So uh, that's, that's good to know. There are some solo scenarios, scenarios in here. Um, in fact, let's look at all of them. We have attack on Pearl Harbor, the sinking of Prince of Wales and the Repulse, the Battle of the Java Sea, a fictional carrier versus carrier, Battle, the Battle of the Coral Sea, Battle of Midway, Battle of Eastern Solomons, Combined Fleet versus Pacific Fleet, it's fictional, and the Indian Ocean Raid, which is fictional, finally ending with the Battles of Santa Cruz Islands and the Second Naval Battle of Guadalcanal, and there's a bonus 11th scenario, which is a custom scenario for the Solomon Islands. There's a section on creating new scenarios and then strategy and tactics. So the first scenario is single player. Second scenario is a tutorial, also single player. I like the way they're guiding you into the system. A lot of games are doing that now. It's a very, very good thing. Uh, scenario three, also uh, single player. All right, so the scenarios are set up. So now you get into the two player scenarios. You got beginner, you got a tutorial for two players, beginner, and you just work your way up. And that's pretty cool. So for a given scenario, it gives you the objective, how to play, the units for the Imperial Japanese Navy and the U.S. Navy. All right, so that is the scenario book. Very nicely printed. Then we have the rule book. <clears throat> and it comes in probably about 24, no, 20 pages. So here we go. Uh, each hex is 75 kilometers. Each turn is about 90 minutes or three hours at night. And uh, instead of reading the whole rule book, you can adopt, <clears throat> excuse me, you can opt to start learning the game with the help of tutorial scenarios. Each scenario will tell you which rules from this rule book are needed in order to play them and also the exclusive rules for that, <clears throat> for that scenario, not common to other scenarios. All right, so going through the rule book here, we have a game equipment explanation. It's not too it's not too fine a print it's not too large a print it's kind of a it's actually kind of a perfect size here uh, and the and the graphics are very nice interspersed where they need to be um, they have like little markers and things do they have yeah they've got some uh, you know rule examples and descriptions to show you how the rules work that's good go through the different phases doesn't look like it's a very very highly dense rule book which fits with their description that it's going to be uh, open to new players so that's nice and then we've got a lot of goodness they their production is just really good all right so the first thing we got is this little fold-out board 
gives us the turn tracker. Here's our first first day, second day. So the scenarios will obviously take place over one or two days, depending on the uh, on the scenario. Uh, you got a couple night turns, and you got your day turns going here, and then night night day and day. So that's pretty cool. Up to 24 turns, so that's kind of nice. And then the instructions are clearly printed. Very clear, easy to read. Like I said their production values are pretty good. We have a red and a blue. Who's gonna win? Oh, blue one, six to one. Nice dice too. Good size, rounded corners, so they roll like you saw already roll pretty well. Ooh, got a six again. All right, now we got some counter sheets. Let's take a look at those. We have, obviously we're gonna have ships and we have search, search markers uh, and they have various outcomes on the back. We have detected misdirect contact. So you're gonna probably draw those from a cup to determine how your search went. Here is the Enterprise, the Dragon, the Revenge. Interesting that they have the, uh, the names of the ships written, written in Japanese as well as American. Yeah, American, English. That's some nice bacon American. Uh, we've got our turn tracker. The board feels kind of flimsy, but these things punch out really well and they feel like a pretty good, pretty good counterweight. Got a pretty good counterweight there. All right, so there's counter sheet one. They're not actually numbered. That's what we have here is counter sheet one. Counter sheet two, we have some more, some more ships, some generic, some generic unnamed ships here as well. Uh, they got the class, the class written, the different values are on there. Those are, uh, you know, kind of double, uh, double the size of a regular counter. Rectangles. This is interesting. I'm excited about this one. Can't land, can't launch, no markers. Uh, then we've got the uh, Japanese flag, the American flags here, we've got dummies and dummies for the uh, for the Japanese as well as task force. So I guess for solo scenarios or just hidden units. Sighted, fleets being sighted, markers. More ships, lots of ships in this one. This is nice. Got critical damage tokens here, uh, withdrawal. And then they have a different number value on the back, so we'll have to see what those are about. You learn the rules. More ships. These are the Japanese ships, got the Americanized names as well as the Japanese names. And then we've got planes. Got like dive bombers. Torpedoes. Fighters. We got like six sheets of counters here. Some more ships, more planes. I like how the uh, the, the the American ships have uh, the American planes are going in one direction and the Japanese planes are going in a different direction. So even just by color when it's on the map, it kind of give you that effect of approaching each other. Instead of everything just kind of like being away. One last sheet. A lot of Japanese planes. A lot of Japanese ships here. It makes sense that we would have a lot of Japanese ships. Since we're, they have the home field advantage. Got zeros, Bettys. All right, so there is that. Now we got our, let's see what we got here. So we've got a little overview map here. The attack on Pearl Harbor. And obviously, oh, here's where all the ships are, that were sitting there waiting, unfortunately. There's the Arizona. So this is just a, this is a, this is actually, this is really nice too. It's on, uh, I can even finish the back. You know, with a, like a watermark look. Uh, it's kind of a linen-y uh, canvas, faux canvas paper. It's not, it's not just your regular paper. It's got kind of a texture to it. Uh, very nice. So there's the map of Ford Island, Pearl Harbor. Then we've got a fold out game board. Oh. They have lots of game boards here. This is Battle of the Java Sea. And it's a, just a small map. So you're just going to play this on this small map here. And if you flip it over, you've got the sinking of the Prince of Wales and the Repulse. And it's just a plain 
ocean map. This one has some pre-designed locations here, pre-designated locations, as, long as, you, as well as your uh, cardinal indicator, compass points. So that's nice, nice seamless map mounted, very cool. And then this is the setup for scenario one, the order of battle, and the scenario two and scenario three. And it's nice hard card stock. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like a board. They, man, they do things well. Scenario number four, they're raising the bar for war game designers. Um, or publishers, I should say. Scenario number five, so this covers one through five. Then we've got another one here scenario six, seven, and eight. Getting a lot bigger. Let me see a lot bigger order of a battle here. Scenario nine is the Eastern Fleet and reinforcements. And scenario ten. And then we've got a chart. All their charts, instead of being on cards on a cardboard cardstock or on this chipboard. It's really cool. Alternate order of battles for scenario five, scenario nine, scenario 10, scenario six, seven. These are alternate order of battles. Scenario four. Oh, so this is the American. Was this all American? I thought I saw a mixture. Some of these had a mixture. And then this is the American order of battle. Set up three of 12, four of 12, five of 12, six of 12. So this is the American side. And then now we get to the Japanese side. So that's why I was like, oh, are those going to be randomly drawn? What's going on? So here's alternate order battle and then scenario four, scenario five, seven and 12, seven and eight of 12. And then scenario six, scenario seven, scenario eight again. Scenario nine, South Seas Fleet, the Malaya Task Force. Scenario 10. And that's 11 of 12 and 12 of 12. So wow, gosh, that's what's making this heavy. That's pretty cool. All right, and then we've got the Player's Aid card. There are two copies of this. Identical, you got your anti-air chart, your air to surface chart, naval combat chart, Raycon chip result, Recon chip result, tactical victory points, and on the other side is the aircraft, ships, fleet formation, land bases, rule reminders, ready reference, day and night, turns, unit reference. Two copies of that. Then we've got our land base sheet, and this is going to be a sideboard, so it's only one sided. This is on the side, but it's only one sided, also. Um, for doing different raids. So these are identical charts here. And when things move around in flowcharts, pretty neat. You get the base marker here. Landing for the map, landing from the cap, place on the map. Boom. And then we've got a mounted, another raid. So there's the same raid graphic here. The task force, the dummy, US, the U.S. Navy fleet sheet. Nice, nice thick mounted map. And it's a really nice touch that they, you know, just add decorative graphics on the back too, just to kind of make it a, give it a clean, professional look. So we get task force number one through number ten built here. Oh, excuse me, through thirteen. We got them down here as well, and the dummy markers. And we've got one for the Imperial Japanese Navy as well. We're going to expand your board. Now we got a big map. We've got two big maps. All right, so we're going to fold this one here. They're double sided. All right, so here's the first one here. This is the Battle of the Eastern Solomons. So it gives you the map for this battle instead of having just a generic map out where you have to like lay out things and, you know, boundaries. Etc. It also shows you here clearly where the uh, U.S. Navy is going to start, where the Imperial Japanese Navy is going to start, and the battle here for for Henderson, Buka, 
Peace from Solomon's, and then on the other side, Battle of Midway. Everybody starts here. Get to Midway. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, we got some great, great games coming out lately. And VUCA is, is leading the way. Okay, so now we've got the Battle of Coral Sea. Map for that scenario. And on the other side, the Combined Fleet versus Pacific Fleet. This is fictional. And again, it's gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> Go to town. So, if you pick up a copy of the very well-produced Task Force Carrier Battles in the Pacific by Luca Simulations, you're going to get the scenario-specific maps, double-sided, two, uh, four by two, A4 size, so four by two panels, uh, double-sided maps. You're gonna get the uh, US and Imperial Japanese Navy fleet control mark, uh, control boards. You're gonna get the land base sheet board. You're gonna get two copies of the player reference charts all on thick chipboard. You're gonna get the 12 order of, well, there's six sheets for setup, your order of battles, double-sided. You're gonna get the smaller uh, two-panel board for Battle of Java Sea and the sinking of Prince Edward and the Repulse. You get the little small map, paper map for Attack on Pearl Harbor, it's a tutorial scenario. You're gonna get five sheets of counters, no, six sheets of counters and no, five, Six sheets. Six sheets of counters and markers. The one little turn tracker board, sideboard. Two dice, blue and red. Blue keeps winning, rolling sixes. Can you roll other than six? There you go, got a two. The rule book and the scenario book. And a nice, beautiful box. And that is everything that comes in task. Force Carrier Battles in the Pacific by VUCA Simulations, game designed by Jenishiro Suzuki. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!